This video will be all about the French conditional, its present form and its past form. I'll go over when it's used, its conjugation and some examples of le conditionnel in action. Le conditionnel présent is used to describe hypothetical actions, but an easier way to look at it, at least for English speakers, is that it's used to say a subject would do something, should do something, or could do something. And because of this, it's often used to make polite requests. For example, when asking for something or when ordering food. As you'll notice, there's no equivalent for the word would in French. While English uses two words in the conditional, French simplifies this and only uses one. So, I would like, two words, becomes j'aimerais, and he would be becomes il serait. You'll often see le conditionnel présent partnered up with l'imparfait in sentences that use the word si, which means if. For example, here we have a hypothetical situation where a condition needs to be met for the action to occur. Donc, je jouerais si je n'étais pas blessé, which translates to, I would play if I wasn't hurt. And this sentence can be flipped and still be correct. So you can also say, si je n'étais pas blessé, je jouerais, which translates to, if I wasn't hurt, I would play. Just remember that in hypothetical sentences like these, si is always followed by l'imparfait, and the other part of the sentence will be in le conditionnel présent. As I mentioned earlier, le conditionnel présent is how you say should and could in French, which is super useful to know because we say I should, he should, they could, we could, all of the time in English. So, to say should, use the verb devoir in le conditionnel présent, and to say could, use the verb pouvoir in le conditionnel présent. So, to say I should, you should, etc. in French, it's je devrais, tu devrais, ils, elles, ont devrait, nous devrions, vous devriez, and il, elle, devrait, and to say I could, you could, etc. in French, it's je pourrais, tu pourrais, il, elle, on pourrait, nous pourrions, vous pourriez, and il, elle, pourrait. Some examples of these verbs in action would be mon genou me fait très mal, je pense que je devrais aller à l'hôpital, which translates to, my knee really hurts, I think I should go to the hospital. So again, we use the verb devoir in le conditionnel présent to say should in French. Next example, pourriez-vous m'aider, which is a polite way of asking for help, which translates to, could you help me? So again, we use the verb pouvoir in le conditionnel présent to say could in French. Okay, so I know I've been through quite a few examples and you're all probably wondering, well, how exactly do I conjugate it? Basically, what you do is you take your verb's infinitive form, which is its unmodified, unconjugated, original form, and then you add the conditional endings, which are the exact same as l'imparfait. So these endings are, depending on the subject, AIS, AIS, AIT, IONS, IEZ, and AIENT. For the vast majority of verbs that end in ER, such as manger, the formula for le conditionnel présent is again your infinitive verb, which again is the unmodified form of the verb, plus the conditional endings, depending on the subject. So the verb manger would be je mangerai, tu mangerais, il, elle, on mangerait, nous mangerions, vous mangeriez, and il, elle mangerait. 
It's the exact same process with IR verbs such as choisir. You take the infinitive and add the conditional ending depending on the subject. So it would be je choisirai, tu choisirai, il, elle, on choisirai, nous choisirions, vous choisiriez, and il, elle choisirait. As you notice, the stem is always the same. It's always choisir, and then depending on the subject, you add the appropriate conditional ending. For RE verbs such as vendre, prendre, mettre, it's essentially the same process as previously mentioned, except for one little adjustment of dropping the E from the infinitive stem. As you see here, once you drop the E from your infinitive, your stem is good to go. So vendre would be je vendrai, tu vendrai, il, elle, on vendrai, nous vendrions, vous vendriez, and il, elle vendrait. Unfortunately, like for every other verb tense, there are a bunch of lone wolf verbs that do their own thing and have their own unique conjugation. The good news is that the conditional verb endings stay the same no matter what the verb is. The irregular part are the stems of these verbs, which is the first part of the verb when it's conjugated. Here I made a useful graphic that shows all of the most common verbs that have irregular stems in the conditional. Remember, it's just the stem that's irregular, so once you have the stems down, the process will be easy as then you just add the standard conditional ending depending on the subject, which never change. So let's look at the verb aller, which is to go. So here we take aller's irregular stem, which is ir, and then we just add the conditional endings to it depending on the subject. So it would be j'irai, tu irai. Il, elle, on irait, nous irions, vous iriez, and ils iraient, elles iraient. And it's the exact same process with all of the other irregular verbs in le conditionnel présent. Now let's move on to le conditionnel passé, which is the second half of the French conditional mood. Essentially, this is how you say a subject would have done something, should have done something, and could have done something, which again is said all the time in English, so it's really useful to have this verb tense down pat. Le conditionnel passé is often used alongside le plus que parfait in sentences that use si, again meaning if, for example, s'il avait fait beau, on serait allé au parc, which translates to, if it had been nice outside, we would have gone to the park. Again, the two parts of the sentence can be swapped and still be correct, but remember that when talking about hypothetical situations like this from the past, C has to be followed by le plus que parfait, and then the other part of the sentence will be in le conditionnel passé. So, in order to say should have, you use the verb devoir in le conditionnel passé, and in order to say could have, you use the verb pouvoir in le conditionnel passé, both using avoir as their helping verb. So, to say I should have, you should have, etc. in French, it's j'aurais dû, tu aurais dû, il, elle, on, aurait dû, nous aurions dû, vous auriez dû, ils auraient dû, and elles auraient dû. And in order to say, I could have, you could have, etc., it's j'aurais pu, tu aurais pu, ils, elles, on aurait pu, nous aurions pu, vous auriez pu, ils auraient pu, and elles auraient pu. So some examples of these verbs in action would be j'aurais dû partir plus tôt, which translates to I should have left earlier. 
As you may notice, after saying I should have in French, j'aurais dû, the following verb, which is your main verb, your action verb, will be in its infinitive form. Next example, nous aurions pu aller au cinéma, which translates to we could have gone to the movies. So again, after saying could have in French, the following verb, which is your main verb, your action verb, will be in its infinitive form. And in this case, it's aller. The formula for conjugating le conditionnel passé is the subject plus either avoir or être as the helping verb in le conditionnel présent plus the past participle of your main verb. So a simple example would be vous auriez fini. So half the battle is knowing avoir and être in le conditionnel présent. Avoir is j'aurais, tu aurais, il, elle, on aurait, nous aurions, vous auriez, and ils auraient, elles auraient. And être is je serais, tu serais, il, elle, on serait, nous serions, vous seriez, and il serait, elle serait. But you might be asking yourself, well, how do I know which verb to choose as my helping verb? Well, the rules are the exact same as the ones you may already know from studying le passé composé, so if that's the case, this will be a review. Without going into a lot of detail, always use avoir as your helping verb unless your main verb is a Dr. and Mrs. Van der Tramp verb or a reflexive verb. For these verbs, use être. Dr. Mrs. Vandertramp is a very useful mnemonic to help French learners remember which verbs use être as their helping verb. A lot of these verbs have to do with movement and transition, such as aller, to go, monter, to climb up, go up, descendre, to go down, etc. It's important to note that sometimes these verbs can take avoir as their helping verb if a direct object is involved, but we're not going to get into that in this video. In the vast majority of cases, Dr. And Mrs. Vandertram verbs, when in their past participle form, must agree in gender and number with the subject. So if you were to write, elle serait allée au cinéma, you add an E since it's a female subject doing the action. If you were to write, il, plural, so il serait allé, you would add an S because it's a group of males or a group of males and females doing the action. And if you were to write L, plural, so elle serait allé, you would add an ES since it's a group of females doing the action. While that's the foundation, the rules of past participle agreement in French are much more complex and complicated but I'll cover that in a future video. Reflexive verbs, aka verbs that have se in front of them, always use être as their helping verb with no exceptions. These are verbs such as se laver, to wash oneself, and se raser, to shave oneself. As you see here, just like Dr. And Mrs. Vandertramp verbs, Reflexive verbs also generally agree in gender and number with the subject. With reflexive verbs, just make sure you're adding the right reflexive pronoun, that is me, te, se, etc., into the mix between the subject and the verb. So the second part of the equation when conjugating le conditionnel passé is the past participle. And the formula for conjugating past participles in French is quite simple for the most part. For ER verbs, chop off the ER and add an E accent aigu. For IR verbs, chop off the IR and add an I. And for RE verbs, chop off the RE and add a U. Of course, it wouldn't be French if there weren't a bunch of exceptions to this rule. 
But on my Instagram page, you can find this useful graphic that shows the most common irregular past participles in French, which will be the second part of your verb conjugated in le conditionnel passé. For example, if you wanted to say, I would have read the book, conditionnel passé, you would say, j'aurais lu le livre. Again, two parts here. Avoir in le conditionnel présent as your helping verb, and then lire in its past participle form, which is lu. And it's the same process for all other verbs, but again, watch out for verbs like mourir and venir, which take être instead of avoir as their helping verb. Thank you everyone for watching. I know that was a lot to take in, but I hope the French conditional mood makes a little more sense to you all now. That being said, no matter your French level, feel free to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook for French vocab, memes, useful expressions, and more.